Hello everyone and welcome to NASCAR.com Studio 3. I'm Jonathan Merriman, joined from the R&D Center by Jay Fabian, the Managing Director of the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series. Jay, how are you? I'm good. Glad to be on here. Absolutely. All right, so Bristol this weekend, we anticipate this being a race unlike anything we've seen in terms of speeds and loads on drivers and everything. A lot has been made of that. Uh, what is the sanctioning body uh, anticipating as we head into Bristol? Yeah, the speeds, speed should be up. Should be a great race like Bristol always is. Um, loads on the drivers, it's, it's Bristol. There's going to be loads on the drivers. We'll see. We'll see what happens as the weekend progresses, but um, I expect it to be a good race, fast race. And always, you know, for the past couple of years, Bristol's been using that track bike compound. How's, what's NASCAR's role in, in whether or not they do that, where they put that, or, or is it up to the track? So it's a collaboration between the, the tracks, between NASCAR, there's driver input, um, Goodyear, you know, there's a, there's a group that that makes that decisions and moves forward with it's certainly not one one individual or one entity it's it's all of us working together to try to figure out the best solution for what the what the race needs can we expect to see that this weekend and, and with this new package is it necessarily a guarantee of where you guys will put that in any one spot on the racetrack yeah we're putting it uh, both corners four feet from the bottom so it'll be on it'll, it'll be on both ends now jay we recently just got back from the west coast swing these teams have had time to work on this 2019 aero package um, so is texas more of an indication what we'll see going further than maybe that we saw in atlanta vegas and auto club i would expect it to be there are some tracks that that race better with the package than others and we we frankly expected that at the beginning of the season i think that you know, from my past of working on a race team, you get out of Daytona and you prep for the West Coast and you build your cars, you build all of your cars for the West Coast at one time. Um, and you get out there and you underperform and then you pretty much rebuild everything you have to go to Texas. That's your next spot that you run a mile and a half. So I think that's when you're gonna see the, the hard work paying off for the people that were maybe a little bit behind. And I think the ones that were pretty good, they're not gonna stop working but um, the gap has closed up definitely in performance there between the teams that were maybe struggling at the beginning of the season and have had a chance to regroup for the, for the next mile and a half, which was Texas. Something new this year is a post-race inspection. Through seven races, what is NASCAR's take on, on how that's been going? So post-race inspection, it's a good question. Um, the key to that is not just post-race inspection, but it's the inspection model in its entirety. So, so we have inspectors in the garage all the time now for the Cup Series that that looks at the cars during practice when they unload. So we've we've set our expectations high on how they bring cars to the track, and the teams have responded and they've done really well. So when you get to post-race, you're really just looking to see if there's any loose ends that weren't buttoned up, looking to make sure that someone hadn't slipped something in on you between between on the grid and uh, post-race. There's there's a lot of things you're looking for that you can't see through a normal inspection that you can look at a little closer, but all that's been going really well. I think the, the teams have responded well, our inspectors are doing a good job, so really it's just kind of the final look of the fit and finish of the car and how it finished the race. Uh, coming out of Texas, there's a lot of conversation about qualifying. Steve O'Donnell on Sirius XM earlier this week said NASCAR would take a look at that yet again. Is there any further discussion on how that may change? I know we got a couple of racetracks coming up here um, where it may not be as important, say, as we go to Kansas and other intermediate tracks. So what's the timetable like for, for you guys to get in there and discuss something we may see down the road? Yeah, we know we know that we're going to have to do something, obviously. we. Um... We do have a little bit of time, like you mentioned, as far as leading into Kansas. Um, we will look at everything we need to to try to make it something better for the fans to see what happened. What happened to Texas and what happened, what has happened this year, isn't something that we're proud of, and we need to see every week. So we're gonna we're gonna fix it, right? Whatever that fix it means, we're gonna do. We're gonna have meetings and talk about a lot of different avenues to try to make that better for for all of us here and the fans especially so that they don't have to witness that again. I think you get to Bristol, Richmond, you might see some people sitting on the end of pit road just because they're waiting for 
desirable track temp or, or whatever that whatever they may need to qualify faster, but it won't be the usual waiting for a, for a partner to draft with. All right, Jay, we appreciate your time and make sure you watch the race this weekend at Bristol.